Welcome to La Cocina of Two Nations. Today I have a special guest with me. He's called Mi nombre es Cesar. And we're going to talk about a main ingredient in the Mexican kitchen, also in the US kitchen. We're going to talk about chiles. We know a chile is called more than a veggie, but it's not a veggie, it's a fruit because it has seeds inside of the chili. And as we know, chiles has different spices, spices level. How you know, Cesar, that many chiles that we have in Mexico and the US has different scale of spices? Yeah, I know a little bit. A little uh, bit? I want a little more. Can you explain it? Yeah, I can explain, I can explain to you. Okay. It's called, or le llamamos, la escala de Scoville. ¿sí? La escala de Scoville mide el nivel de picor de cada chile que tenemos en el mercado. Empieza principalmente en el año 1912 y fue, su creador fue Wilbur Scoville. ¿sí? Podemos medir, empezar en una escala de 15 grados Scoville hasta 16 millones de grados Scoville. Y como conocemos principalmente la parte más picante de esta escala podría ser la capsicina, la capsicina pura. En what's capsicin? What's capsin? The capsin is the level of spices that the chili has in, in the natural way. That's the capsin. That's the main ingredient that makes a chili spicy. You know about capsin? No. No. Capsin is, is the agent that makes a chili spicy. Yeah? And we can measure everything with a scoping scale. And you may know we're going to start talking about the chili jalapeño. First of all, the chili jalapeño, I know, is the first chili in the Mesoamerica culture. In Mesoamerica, in Mexico, is used by the Mayas, eh, Aztecas, Olmecas, all the Mesoamerica culture that we have. And we may know that chili has very nutritional value, like vitamin C, they use it for the flu, and also the capsin has a relaxed effect to the people that eat the chili. We measure in this chili jalapeño into the scale of 2,500 to 8,000 Scoville scale. So it's just spicy, or not? It's a meal spice one. Yeah, you know it's a meal spice chili. We can use it on fresh salsas, salsa fresca. You can use for cooking with other meats. And it comes from it's original from Jalapa, Veracruz. Yeah, Jalapa, Veracruz was the first approach of knowing the chile jalapeño. It got exported to USA in the year of 1848. It comes to New Mexico, Arizona, California, and they use it to make also salsas and many dishes. What did you know that is made with chile jalapeño in the US? I know the chili pepper. What is the chile pepper? Cesar, can you tell me what's a chili popper? It's a, it's a chili with cheese inside of it. Okay. And put in the... We, it's, I don't know how, it's breaded, right? Yeah. It's breaded, then you fry it up. And you have a stuffy chili with cheese. So Cesar, you know that we can dry up chiles to make another chili? I know, but how do you do it? We usually dry chiles, put it into the sun, directly to the sun, or you can make like a roll toaster. When we dry a chili jalapeño, how do you know that it turns into a chili chipotle? The chili chipotle, as you know, when you dry a chili, it gets a uh, spicy intensifies. It's more spicy. it's more spicy because we don't have water into the chili, so it gets more spicy. Into the Scoville scale, it gets to uh, 5,000 to the 10,000 now because we don't have water now. And the chipotle gets that smoke flavor, so you can use it in many different dishes. Yeah, like this one, so you know that the jalapeño one turns into a chipotle when this gets dry up. Where's chipotle from? Chipotle ground up in Veracruz, like, you know, in Jalapa, Veracruz. But you can also find it in the U.S., in the south of Texas, the certain of New Mexico. And in Mexico, you can find it also in Chihuahua, Oaxaca, and Sinaloa. We're going to continue with another Chile, Cesar. We're going to talk about the Chile, California, as known to uh, Chile, Anaheim. Mm -hmm. And it's called Anaheim, too, because the city of the U.S. You know it? No, so, I didn't know it. I just know it for California. And in Mexico, it grows in the north of Mexico, like parts of Sinaloa, here in the Baja. It's called also Chile del Norte, 
And it's not that really spicy. It's uh, the scale of the Scoville. It's about 500 to 2,500 Scoville scale. When it goes to California? They take it to California at the year of 1894. And it's cultivated in New Mexico right now. You can make like stuffed chilies with cheese. You can also make rajas con crema. You can also make salsas. And when a chili anaheim of, of California gets dry, gets turned into a chile guajillo. Okay. We're going to continue with the chile guajillo. Yeah. It's a dry version of the chile fresco mirasol that is cultivated uh, se cultiva en el estado de Zacatecas. Is the main producer of chile guajillo, and it's not another spicy chili. In the scale, it's, it, uh, what number has? It has 2,500 scoville scale. So it's not that spicy. It's not a spicy. It's a, even in the dishes, gives a sweet flavor. No it in the U.S. is the birria, for example. The main dish they use chile guajillo is in the birria with another mix of dry chilies. You can also make like adobo or like chicken and pollo guajillo with potatoes. You can use in salsas for enchiladas too. So it's popular. It's very popular chile guajillo. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the chile poblano. Is that how you hear about the chile poblano? Yeah. I know people make chiles rellenos. Chiles rellenos is one of the most popular dishes in Mexico and now in the US. Mm -hmm. And it gets originated in the state of Puebla. Yeah. We know the chile in Mexico as one of the main dishes of the history is called chile en nogada. You know about the chile en nogada? Yeah, I know they put crema and granada in. Granada is called the crema is called the, the nogada. Yeah, I said that's the name of the chile. And it gets really popular when the monjas in El Convento de Santa Monica made this dish for celebrate the independence of Mexico. So they put like a stuff of meat, fruits, uh, veggies, and lo uh, bañaban con la nogada and put the granada into the chile. In the Escobar scale, Cesar, this is not a very spicy chili. It's also a, a sweet chili. It only has 1,000 to 1,500 scoby grades. And you can find it also a very popular dish that is rajas con crema. We roasted the chili, peel it out, and mix it with, cook it with onion, then the roasted chili and put crema, cheese, and it's really good. It's also popular in the US. You can find it in Texas, New Mexico, California, y también el chile relleno es uno de los platillos más consumidos en Estados Unidos. And when we try chile poblano, Cesar, it turns into a chile ancho. Ya, yeah? el chile ancho, as you may know, Cesar, we use it in dishes like mole, adobo, we use it also in the birria, we also stuff it chile ancho with cheese, and it gets a uh, more sweet flavor when you dry out the chili, dry the chili. So you can find it from Poblano to how do you call? Uh, uh, chile ancho. Chile ancho. And it gets more spicy? It gets a little bit spicy. Like a little bit. Uh, we talk about 1,000 to 2,000 in the scoby scale. Not that much. Next chili we want to talk about is the chile huero. This one? Yeah. As you can see, el chile güero doesn't have that green color, mm -hmm. red color. It has a yellow color, yeah? It's originated in the Yucatan Peninsula, so in the south of Mexico, and it's not a spicy chili. As you, as you can see, we are talking about the lowest spicy mm -hmm. to the uh, spice. Very high. Yeah. I know people call chile caribe too. Yeah, it's called chile caribe because in the island that is grown up of the U.S., it's called like Santa Fe Grande. So that's why they call Chile Caribeño, Chile Caribe, Chile Güero. You know, we have three different names now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next Chile we're going to talk about, Cesar, is el Chile Serrano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chile Serrano is getting more spicy right now. In the Scoville scale, 
La Chile Serrano is about 10,000 to 23,000 on the scoville scale. It's a spicy one right now. We want to enter a good into spicy. It. It's a good spice. This originates in the mountains region of Puebla in Hidalgo. Yeah. It's Why called, it's called Serrano? It's called Serrano Cesar because the mountains in Mexico we call it La Sierra. Yeah. So La Sierra Serrano is the name from Las Sierras. Uh, I know that you can you can make uh, salsas para platillos like cherm that is in aguachile. The aguachile, that's right. You can make aguachile with this. You can make salsas. You can also eat it raw. Only you put lemon, salt, and it's all. You yeah. can toast it. And... Also, you can toast it. You can like salsa tatemada. Yeah, you can roast it. Even pickle the chile serrano, like the chile jalapeño pickle. You can pickle always the yeah, serrano. You can find it in the latita. Yeah, and you can also find it in Mexico, in Sinaloa, eh, Nayarit, Tamaulipas. They produce 180,000 tons per year from the Chile Serrano. So it's a very popular chile in Mexico. So you can know, if you don't know it, now you know. Your strength. <laughs> Cesar, have you know that if we dry Chile Serrano, it turns into a Chile de Arbol? No, I don't know. Chile de Arbol, Cesar, is one of the most spicy chile in Mexico. It uses number high. Hmm? ¿Qué, ¿Qué número tiene en la escala? En la escala de Scoville, it has uh, 50,000 to 30,000 Scoville scale. It's used since the uh, pre-Hispanic times. It's also founded on the city of Yahualica, Jalisco. It also has other names like cola de rata, pico de pájaro, uh, chile bravo, chile seco. But it's also used for mixed salsas, adobo, or just ground it and put it into the, into the dishes. You can roast it, then ground it, and you put it into the, I see like the, the menudo. The, I see that they can use it in the menudo. In the the menudo. Menudo. Like chip tipping one, you uh -huh. can use chile de arbol for the menudo. We want to talk about one of the most spicy chili in Mexico, Cesar. We want to talk about the chile habanero. Chile habanero in the scarf scale gets 100,000 to 350,000 scale scale grains. So it's one of the most spicy chiles here in Mexico. It get originated from the Amazon port and it was spread to Mexico. Mm -hmm. So it arrived to the uh, Yucatan, Quintana Roo, also gets so many popular in Chiapas, Oaxaca, and it came over Mexico. I see too much people selling in the in the streets in Mexico. In so, Mexico, so popular. See, Pop popular. Many popular in Mexico. It got his name after the city of La Habana, La Habana, Cuba. So it gets uh, habanero from that part. Mm -hmm. And Yucatan is the most large producer of habanero. They use it on dishes like cochinita pibil. They mix it with pickled onion, pickled red onion. Yeah. And habanero, lime, vinegar. It's like a, like a sauce. Yeah, it's like a salsa, like fresh salsa, like uh -huh. pico de gallo, but with habanero. And in the US, they like mix it with sauces that you have there, like barbecue with habanero, or also bottled habanero sauces. And it's getting real popular in the USA too. So it's a very spicy flavor. So I don't know if you want to try it. I'm gonna tell you this is not the most spicy chili in the world. There's three more, pero the one of the spiciest one. So let's go. Let's see. Let's go, mijo. Salud. It's good. It's really good, right? <laughs> okay, now I'm. I'm so. <laughs> now we know. can talk, but. <laughs> <laughs> we do it for the. for. for science, right? Yeah. For knowing. <laughs> Sister, you can see. <coughs> it's a hot chili, right? Yeah, it's so hot. My, my tongue. 
It's Perfect. frying. <laughs> so now the audience know that about more the spices of the chiles. So Cesar, for the next episode, I think we want to make salsas. Okay. And to know if you learn something about chiles, we want to use this chile. How do you call this chile? Jalapeño, actually. Jalapeño chile, right? Yeah. We're going to use jalapeño. I think we're going to use this one too. How do you call these ones? Uh, it's dry serrano, like I don't know it's his name. Remember we call it chile that one? Oh yeah. Chile that one, right? And we're going to use another dry chili. Chipotle. Chipotle. And it comes from? Jalapeño. Jalapeño. Yeah. So we're going to make three salsas. I think we're going to make a traditional guacamole with jalapeño. Mm -hmm. We can make a salsa matcha with chile, chile de árbol. And we're going to make a salsa tatemada with chile chipotle. Okay. You like it? I want to try it. Okay, let's go. So thank you for watching us here in La Cocina of the Nations and see you next episode.